Today's speaker is a very illustrious author. He is the author of books too numerous to list. Um, he has been chronicling the American political scene for 40 years, at least. Um, he is, uh, in addition to all the books he's written, he's a been a columnist for the Baltimore Sun for about 25 years and is currently writing a column that is syndicated by the Chicago Company, Chicago Tribune Company. He has been called a journalistic institution, and I would agree with that. I don't know how many of you remember a bestseller in 1972 called The Boys on the Bus. Well, I see a lot of heads, okay. Well, this is one of the boys. And um, we're really proud to welcome him to the museum, and I'll just tell you one little human interest note about Jules that I thought was exciting. He's born and raised in Union City. So let's give a rousing Hudson County homecoming welcome to a hometown boy who did really well for himself. Jules Whitcover. Thank you, neighbors. <laughs> I, uh, I'm a graduate of Union Hill High School, and uh, one of my uh, uh, greatest boasts is uh, numerous times we, we beat uh, Devers High School in, uh, in football and basketball. Uh, I, uh, I should tell you how I came, I came to writing this particular book about, about Black Tom. Um, most of my other books, in fact, almost all of my other books are, are about American politics. Um, but uh, as, as a kid growing up in, in Union City, uh, I was born actually 11 years after uh, Black Tom. So this is not a personal account. But um, uh, when I was in, when I was in high school, it was it was during the beginning of World War II, and I uh, I worked on the docks in 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 Weehawken for the Erie Railroad, and uh, kind of became a, a World War II and World War One buff, and and interested in 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 the dock scene, also. Uh, one of my favorite movies, of course, was the, the movie with Marlon Brando on the waterfront, because it was shot uh, in a lot of the places where I where I worked as a as a dock hand. Um, but in any event, uh, the reason I, I I decided to I came to write write this book is I one day I was looking through a World Almanac, and I came came across in this in this book two or three lines uh, about something called the Black Tom exp explosion. I knew nothing about it and uh, hadn't heard anything about it, even, even though living in this area. Uh, so, and by this time, I was working in Washington and I had access to the National Archives. So I spent a great deal of time over a couple of years going through the, uh, the uh, National Archives material, including uh, many, many newspaper clippings, including some from, from the Jersey Journal. The, st the story of Black Tom was a huge story for a few days in, 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 in New York uh, and in and New Jersey. It was, a, it was a page one story in the New York Times. And uh, the, uh, the, the amazing thing about the whole story was that um, there was no suspicion at that time that it had anything to do with sabotage. It, um, it, was, it, was, it was mostly regarded as a, just an accident. Uh, I'd just like to read to you from, from the book a couple of lines about, about what, how it was perceived in those days. Uh, this was reported in the New York Times after a, uh, an investigation, a, previous, a, a brief investigation uh, by uh, the, the public safety uh, commissioner of Jersey City, a fellow named Frank Haig. <laughs> 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 and... Uh, uh, more, some more about him later, but uh, the, the, st the story in the New York Times cl concluded, on one point, the various investigating bodies agree that, that the, the fire and subsequent explosions cannot be charged for the account of alien plotters against the neutrality of the United States, although it is admitted that the, the destruction of so, so large a, quality, a quantity of Allied war material must prove cheering. 
news to Berlin and Vienna. Uh, just to backtrack, I, I, I should uh, recall something you, I'm sure most of you know about, about the origins of, uh, of uh, uh, World War I. Uh, it's, the site of Black Tom uh, is what is now called Liberty Park. It's the pr place from which the, the boats go for tourists to visit the Statue of Liberty. Uh, for, for, for two years into World War I, the uh, United States was neutral, but became the, the arsenal for, of democracy, as it was called, because it supplied all the great munitions, or most of the great munitions, for the British and the French in World War I. Britain controlled, controlled the seas, and, and although, although the American policy was, was, was a neutrality, meaning anybody who could, who, who could come here and wanted to buy munitions, they could do so. Obviously, the, the Germans uh, had, had very little opportunity to do that because the British uh, controlled the Atlantic Ocean. But, but, the, but, the, but, but, but the, uh, the Black Tom episode um, was, uh, was, a sh was a shocker uh, because there was no sense that the, that the war had really come to the United States until, until that, that occurred. I'd, I'd just like to read you a, a brief description of, of uh, what, 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 what it was like. This is from, also from the New York Times. The, the blast, like the discharge of a great cannon, shattered the calm, and night turned into day. Flaming rockets and screeching shells pierced the, the sky like a great fireworks display, illuminating Miss Liberty from torch to, to, to base. Beyond her, the tip of Manhattan and much of the world's most spectacular skyline instantly were awash. With the huge explosion, the whole harbor seemed to shudder, sending shock waves pounding against skyscraper windows, shattering them by the thousands, and sending deadly splinters of glass plunging into the streets and sidewalks below. Shrapnel pellets tore into the giant Statue of Liberty and ripped gaping holes in the walls of buildings on nearby Ellis Island. Terrifying newly arrived immigrants who thought they had escaped the Great War in Europe. Late night revelers in Brooklyn were knocked down and sleepers were thrown out from their beds. A 10-year-old, a 10-week-old boy, Arthur Tossin, was hurled from his crib in Jersey City to his death. And inc incredibly, as far as south, of, south, as far south as Philadelphia, others were awakened by what they feared was an earthquake. Police in towns even near farther south in Maryland received telephone inquiries about the mysterious disturbance. And then, and then the fur further on, the Times reports that uh, as soon as the explosions, uh, actually there were two explosions, as soon as the second one uh, was, was heard, uh, the Times reported that, that thousands of people from the large hot hotels poured out, women rushed in scantily clad, in scantily clad clothes, and men who wore pajamas covered with over, over, overcoats. Many women became hysterical. Police whistles were blown frantically, but the police themselves didn't know what it was, what it was all about. In, in any event, it was, it was, uh, it was, it was a tremendous a shocker, but, but for, for some reason, uh, there was no suspicion at the time that there was any, any, uh, uh, sabotage involved, and and uh, one of the reasons was that was that the uh, the whole the whole sabotage operation uh, for, for quite a while during the war uh, was was not was not suspected or or disclosed. The, the war, as I'm sure you all know, began with the assassination of the, of friends. Archduke Franz, Franz Ferdinand of, of Austria-Hungary in Serbia in 1914. My, ap my appetite and all that was, was witnessed 
we, we was wedded by visiting the site of the assassination uh, in, in, U, in what was then Yugoslavia uh, uh, many years later, and I always had an, an interest in the, in, the, in the subject. German ambassador in Washington, Johann Heinrich von Bernsdorf, who had a dual miss, mission. Uh, the, the, the first mission was to keep the United States out of the war, keep the United States neutral. That was that was his, that was why he was he was in Washington and was and was instructed by the, by the German government to, to do what he could to, to see that we stayed out of we stayed out of the war. But the other mission, un, undisclosed, was to be the paymaster for the, a, a, a huge and growing uh, a sabotage operation. In, in which he had uh, several members of his uh, of his uh, embassy staff played very k key roles. Uh, t two of them were uh, his military attaché, uh, Franz von Papen, uh, who uh, later on, um, and uh, there were two others, Captain Carl Boyed, the naval attaché. And his, co his commercial attaché, Dr. Heinrich Albert. Uh, these these three were continuing to function in the embassy as their in their in their uh, ordinary roles, but they were also very deeply involved in 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 in, in, in the various sabotage activities, which included uh, recruiting. Uh, Workers on the docks, uh, many of them Irish who hated the British, and many many others, including uh, black black dock, uh, dock workers, to um, to perform various functions. Uh, one of the th one of the things that they did was to plant on ships uh, slated to go to to Europe. Carrying uh, carrying uh, armaments or or foodstuffs, and to uh, to place on them um, small uh, incendiary bombs that would, uh, when the ships got out to sea, uh, would would would, 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 would ignite, and uh, and often often sink the ships. Uh, these three aides aides of the of the ambassador. Uh, hired uh, um, a, a located uh, science scientists who, who came to the United States and worked in the in, in little little homes plants that they that they created to do the, to make these these uh, incendiary bombs. Uh, the way the mo way some of them worked was to create a, take a, a little glass container. Or, or metal container, and, and make two compartments in it, divided by a thin piece of of, uh, of metal that could be eroded by by, by a combination of uh, of acids. Uh, one of the one of the one of the one of the, the scientists who who, cre who created and manufactured these bombs. Had a uh, had a ball, had a an operation in his uh, home or his or his office on Clinton Street, not far from where we're sitting sitting today, and uh, in any event, this was very very effective uh, over the those years before uh, the United States got got into got into the war. They also had another high, diabolical uh, operation in which they uh, had other. Other scientists either uh, bring to the United States uh, covertly, or developing in pl plants here in this area uh, of um, anthrax and and glanders germs that um, that, that they would uh, then give to the the stevedores and the other wor workers on the docks who were who were. Willing to to work for money or their, their their hatred of the British, and give them these 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 germs, and and 
with hypodermic needles and then t send them down the eastern shore, eastern shore where thousands and thousands of horses were, were penned prior to being shipped uh, to, uh, to the war zone in, in Europe. Uh, horses were, co were continued to be uh, one of the main uh, means of transportation uh, in, in those days in the, in the 1910s. Uh, and they would walk along the, the pens at night with these hypodermic needles and through the fence and inject the horses with the, these uh, anthrax and glandular germs. As a, as a result, many died in the pens. Others were were, were boarded on on ships, and uh, and died on on the ship, or had to be, and had to be thrown over overboard at sea by the hundreds. And and and, uh, and all this was was masterminded by the ambassador in Washington. Uh, it didn't always go smoothly. Um, the uh, the commercial attaché uh, uh, Heinrich Albert uh, had very incriminating papers uh, that he toted, were, toted with him in the, por the portfolio, uh, and he got on a uh, on a New York subway train one day, followed by Secret Service agents, and uh, t and, and, and I fell asleep on the, on, on the train, and when the train stopped at a certain station, he, he, woke, he woke up and realized that, that uh, this was his, his stop, and he ran out of the subway train and left the portfolio behind him. So obviously the Secret Service people scooped him, scooped him up, and, uh, and eventually all three of those agents uh, were recalled as, along with the ambassador, as as the plot was was uh, was uncovered, uh, he the the, the, the uh, 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 Heinrich Albert, uh, of course, was an utter disgrace, particularly when he was he was dubbed in all the New York newspapers as the minister without portfolio. <laughs> 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 and, uh, but. Uh, Amazing, amazingly, some of these these culprits, uh, although they were embarrassed by by the discovery of what they were doing and, and were recalled, uh, managed somehow to survive. Uh, Franz von Papen, the, uh, the the military attaché, uh, went back to went back to Germany, got involved in the Nazi Party, eventually ro rose to be temporarily the, chair, the Chancellor of Germany and then um, persuaded the then aging President of Germany, Paul Hindenburg, to, appo to appoint a fellow named Schickelgruber to replace him <laughs> as, as, as the Chancellor. And uh, so that shows that sometimes somebody can, re can, can bounce back after a a uh, embarrassing situation, but not to the good of himself or or, or, or mankind. <laughs> uh, in this whole uh, operation, there was a uh, maintained in in Manhattan, in in, uh, in the in the fifteen fifteen hundred fifty fifteenth Street uh, West Fifteenth Street Manhattan, a, uh, a, a a kind of a base uh, for the Germans who, who, who were in the United States, and, and particularly many of the uh, crew members of ships that were um, in, uh, interned in, in, New, in New York Harbor. And uh, the, the house was, was maintained by a former German uh, opera singer, and uh, was wi widely reputed to be a brothel, as well as a, a place to plan uh, all these uh, episodes. Uh, it, it was suspected later on uh, that, that that Black Tom uh, was placed planned there the, uh, the the night before before the the attack. The 
one of the, one of the women who, who stayed, who, who was visiting that night, reported later that uh, about hearing the plans to uh, pull off this uh, explosion. And she left the night before concerned about it and went, went down to the Jersey Shore to visit a friend for the weekend and uh, was awakened the, the next morning in a, in a shortly after midnight with these huge, huge explosions. And uh, so she, 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 also, she became a, a, a significant witness to what was going on at the house in, uh, on West uh, 15th Street. Friedrich the, gra- the, gro- the Gross, the Gross, to make these, bo- they make, a, make these bombs and then distribute them to the dock workers to, to do, their, do their, their dirty work. The owner of uh, uh, the, 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 the director of the North German Lloyd steamship line, uh, was, which was based in Balt- Baltimore, uh, was co- recalled by, the, by the, the German equivalent of the German Secret Service and, and recruited to oversee uh, the delivery of, of uh, combustible materials and, the, and, and anthrax and glanders, glanders and so forth. And it was brought to was brought to uh, the United States in 1915, earlier 1915, uh, on a German merchant submarine. Uh, it, it was it was it was it was allowed to, um, to to come in to get into the United States because it was not a, and it was not a, considered a, a weapon of war, but uh, the uh, this, the submarine came into Baltimore in in, in April 15, in, I think it was in April April 1915, and the the the, um, the ambassador uh, went from Washington to Baltimore to greet the, uh, the captain and w- wish him well. And uh, even that didn't, didn't tip, tip off American authorities about what, what the ambassador uh, w- was up to. In 1915, also, when the uh, when German submarines sa- sank the British Canard liner, the Lusitania, off Ireland, 1,200 passengers and crew were killed, including 124 Americans, and this was put tremendous pressure on on then President Woodrow Wilson to uh, to deal with with the, with the question of, of uh, neutrality. Uh, he was determined, at all costs, to keep the United States out of out of the war, and he and he took he took no action about it. Until the, the episode that uh, of the of the, uh, of the of the of the minister without portfolio that led to the to the recall of the, th- the three uh, Bernsdorf uh, embassy aides and to uh, to um, Bernsdorf himself. Bernsdorf was a, was a very effective and and uh, and, and important. Uh, amb- ambassador, a diplomat, to, uh, to the Germans, who, who um, cr- created a uh, very close ties to President Wilson, Wilson's closest uh, advisor and close friend, uh, Colonel uh, Edward House, and uh, so it was a great, uh, a great shock to everybody in in the embassy, in the, uh, in, the, uh, in, the in the in the State Department. When it was learned about what was what was going on, when uh, when uh, Bernsdorf finally was 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 recalled, uh, he he sent a farewell letter to the to the ambassador that that said the following: It is said that your government to have declared the under-restricted U-boat war at, uh, at a moment when we were so near to peace. The day will come when people in Germany will see how much you have done for your country in America. That obviously was a, tel- tel- a letter he wished he'd, uh, later he'd, never, he'd never written. Uh, the, uh, 
the whole the whole case of the of the, of the uh, ambassador's role and and the German espionage uh, uh, finally came he t came to a head in uh, in 1917 when it was dis the, it was discovered uh, through an interception of a of a uh, a, 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 a telegram sent uh, from the foreign from from the German foreign Age, uh, secretary Arthur Zimmerman to the German minister in Mexico Heinrich von Eckhart, proposing a deal whereby Mexico would enter the war against the United States in return for for Texas Arizona and New Mexico. Uh, the astonishing thing about the deal was that uh, when Zimmerman was, con was confronted about it, he admitted that it was, that it was, that it was what, what, what he was doing uh, in support of uh, what he said was uh, uh, an opportunity to, uh, to, uh, to end, end the war. And anyway, after after the whole after the the, the, war, the war was over, uh, and, and the, the armistice was signed, the question rose about reparations to be paid for all the damage that was done uh, at Black Tom and various other other places. A uh, a, a, a U.S. German mixed claim commission was was established. To uh, negotiate uh, the settlements of claims that were made, uh, particularly by owners of, pro of property, uh, including the, 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 the munitions d depot uh, at, at Black Tom and other other facilities. But it, it, it took about uh, 25 years to reach any kind of a settlement. But by which time Adolf Hitler was was in, was in, in control and refused to pay. What a surprise! Uh, <laughs> And, it, and but finally, the settlements were, were made. In 19, 1938, a smoking gun was found in the case in, a, in an innocuous postscript to a letter to, to Paul Hilkin, the Baltimore uh, uh, North German Lloyd official, that, uh, that, that requesting, quote, uh, urgent need of another set of glasses underlined. It was an obvious uh, reference to the glass tubes or the cigars that created all those incendiary devices. The uh, two, uh, two of the of the uh, chief black tongue perpetrators, uh, a naturalized U.S. citizen and, form, and briefly a marine named Kurt Janke, and a young naval, German naval, naval cadet named Lothar Whiskey. Uh, were, were arrested and uh, considered the main conspirators, but ne never, never solidly defined. Only Whitsky was ever convicted, convicted by a, a military court. He was sentenced to be hanged, but in 1920, Wilson changed his sentence to life imprisonment. In 1922, at the request of, of the post-war German government, President Calvin Coolidge released him as, as the last held prisoner of, of war. So for all that, all that damage and, and, and intrigue, uh, there was very little punishment doted out to the, uh, to the people who were, who were, who were engaged. I, I, have a, I have a kind of an interesting postscript to the whole story in the, uh, finally, the, 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 the succeeding Federal Republic of Germany uh, made, made some payments in 1979, when its leaders did so in the interest of restoring what was left of, the, of Germans' a good name in the rest of the world. The president, pr principal American lawyer uh, for the claimants at Black Tom was John J. McCloy, who, who, who in, whose work, whose work in, in, in this sabotage settlement 
brought him to the attention uh, earlier of then Secretary Henry Stimson and in turn to President FDR, who made him an Assistant Secretary of War through World War II. McCloy was, was appointed to oversee the controversial internment of Japanese American citizens in California. And afterward, McLean, McCloy became president of the World Bank and the U.S. military governor and high commissioner, commissioner of Germany from 1949 to 1952. He died in 1989 at age 93. In researching this book on Black Tom in the late 1980s, I, I, I located McCloy now back as a lawyer in one of the, in one of the top floors of the World Trade Center's Twin, Twin Towers, from which we could look down on the old site of Black Tom Island at, at, at Liberty Park. McCloy told me then that FDR, in ordering him to move the J Japanese Americans into the camps, said he, he quote, knew all about Black Tom, adding, we don't want any, any more Black Toms. The, uh, the comment was, was, a, was a, a notable coda to the little event in Hoboken and in American history that we've been talking about today. Well, thank you very much for listening. <laughs>